Hi, welcome to Bellevue, Washington, the U.S. headquarters of Esper. While we're still in COVID protocol, uh, we do have our device lab open, and uh, we're working with devices constantly to benefit our Esper customers. So today we're going to give you a quick tour of the lab. So why don't you follow me, and we'll come and check it out. Let's go. Here we are at the lab. Let's go in. So an obvious question is, why a device lab? When you think about Android as uh, an ecosystem, the power of Android is that you have so much diversity in terms of the different types of devices that are available to you, where you can literally dial in your use case against a particular piece of hardware. But with that, it introduces a lot of complexity. Literally, every firmware image for Andro Android is like a snowflake. And that raises a lot of challenges in terms of working with our partners and customers to ensure that they can build devices that work properly for their use case and with Esper. So that really was the driver for us creating our device lab, where we can have all sorts of different kinds of devices, all the way from your standard GMS devices that consumers buy, to development boards that you can literally build your custom AOSP image for, and bringing it all together in a place that lets us advance Esper, solve customer problems easily, and really make it much more smoother for our customers to be able to build their solutions using Esper. Now it's important to note that this is a US lab. We have a similar lab over in India that allows us to have the right diversity mix of devices. Not all devices are available in the US and vice versa. So that gives us tremendous coverage in terms of having devices available for use by Esper. A great place to start is with the ruggedized devices. They typically tie into dedicated device use cases. And so we have a wide variety. We have uh, devices from Samsung, including the new uh, Galaxy uh, Active Tab Pro. Um, we also have a very interesting device that is uh, custom built with a unique set of peripheral support associated with it. So we even dive into that area because a lot of times there's compatibility issues in terms of making these peripherals work with your device management platform. We also have devices from M3, from Denso, uh, Zebra, of course, and so a, a wide range of uh, devices that our customers use. The Juniper device family is very nice as well, made in the United States. Um, we have Honeywell, a lot of the different Honeywell devices. We have a good partnership with them in the APAC region. Additionally, you'll see we just received some devices uh, inbound. So this is part of our device uh, validation process. So these are some tablets from Teguar. We also have some of their handheld devices too. The, they're very nice. Uh, devices for certain uh, use cases. And then finally, capping it off by looking at the Ulyphone Armor family. These are very nicely priced uh, ruggedized smartphones. And for some customers, they uh, fit the bill in terms of what they're looking for. So it's important to understand that the purpose of the device lab family, the one in the US and the one in India, is to be able to test against specific devices. Um, but that does raise the question of, well, our customers are running 10,000 or more devices, and the Esper platform is designed to scale into the hundreds of thousands. So how do we handle testing against scale? The way we do that is we have a technology that we invented called Simular, and it allows us to scale up uh, hundreds of thousands of Android devices that we use as part of our test process as we build our platform and roll out new releases. So through this technology, we're quite easily able to simulate hundreds of thousands of Android devices in a way that lets us um, make sure that our platform can scale. Now that dovetails well with the diversity of Device Lab because as we all know, a lot of times the issues that are encountered are specific to a uh, device and you have to have that device in order to uh, find that particular problem. So with those two brought together, that gives us the ability to solve particular problems with the device that our customers encounter and then ensure that our platform can scale to what we see being millions of devices supported by Esper. Specialized devices for particular use cases are an important part of the Esper lab. 
So with COVID-19, uh, one exploding area of devices are those that measure temperature and do facial recognition for self-check-in. So this is a device by Vito that actually has an integrated hand sanitizer as part of it. So seeing a lot of interesting devices come out that have suddenly boomed in the market. And so this was an important area for us to cover. Uh, with the contact, contactless experience, you're starting to see a lot of interest in kiosks. And so here's a kiosk running Esper Enhanced Android that we do with PauseBank. It's called the Big Pause device. And it's a very economical choice uh, in terms of having a self-service kiosk at a retail location. And we work with a lot of other uh, kiosk makers as well. So you have a lot of different choices with Esper compatibility if you're rolling out a kiosk solution. When you look at uh, these types of devices, these are retail point of sale devices. So we have Toshiba, we have Partech. So these are the types that you'll typically see uh, used in stores going to uh, specialized devices around uh, for seniors to give them access to the internet. Um, we have a Posiflex device with dual screen that's used as point of sale as well. Uh, we also cover ELO, um, and here is um, an ELO i2 device. And then finally, kind of finishing it off, we have this device, which is from Seattle. They're uh, one of our partners, and so they're focused on public safety, running on the first net uh, cellular network. And so really a, a lot of diversity and coverage in terms of these types of specialized devices, just giving you a quick taste, but it's an area that we uh, focus on deeply. We love custom built devices, helping customers create specific implementations of hardware working with Esper to really dial in their particular use case. And so, you know, this is proprietary stuff typically, so we're not gonna show you too much, but suffice to say, we support AOSP all the way. We're very comfortable working with AOSP, getting development boards in, flashing them with your particular build. That's also why we offer Esper Enhanced Android that's de designed to work seamlessly with Esper. So things like not having to do any enrollment on the device manually, it is all seamless and it just happens when the device connects to the internet, is one of many features that we've built into Esper Enhanced Android. Now part of this is working with the uh, chip vendors, the semiconductor partners. So we have a partnership with MediaTek. We of course work with Qualcomm. We cover x86, we do rock chip all winter. So basically, whatever you base your design upon, we can support with Android and make it work with Esper. Now that said, we help customers figure this stuff out because frankly, custom built is not always the right choice. And so that's why we work with device makers that are kind of on the edge of providing you the technology that could be a substitute, save you development costs, NRE, and uh, give you faster uh, to market. And so as an example, that's our partnership with Lenovo. So with their Nano line, we work with Lenovo to bring Android to these devices. It runs x86, and this is an example of a great option that gives you the ability to make the best choice for your business, whether you want to go custom built, or if you want to get something off the shelf that lets you modify it, running Android, working with Esper, we give you the choice to build the best solution you can. One thing that makes us unique is our deep experience in terms of building these types of solutions. We're a cloud-based um, SaaS company, of course, and we have our own version of Android and very deep Android experience. But as a team, we have built and shipped many different types of devices. This goes all the way back to Windows CE, working with handheld PC, palm-sized PC, leading up into internet appliances, if you remember that phase from around 2000, uh, building into Windows Mobile, Windows Phone, going into uh, Fire OS and Alexa, and then with CyanogenMod, working with some of the biggest Android uh, smartphone makers in the world. So this is just a selection of the type of devices that we've been involved in, working with it across all aspects. We've spun boards, we've gone to mass production, we've dealt with field failures. We get that aspect of building hardware because the difference is you can patch software in the field, if you uh, mess up on hardware, good luck. We appreciate that. So this is a great example of how we help our customers with custom built. Our partnership with MediaTek uh, led to working with Intercom, and they have the SB30 uh, EVK that makes it very easy for you to be able to do your hardware development for custom built, and here we have running it in the lab. We've built Esper Enhanced Android for this particular board with all those great features of what we call EEA and give you a great environment for you to have 
just the great onboarding experience with what you need to run your devices in the field efficiently from an operational perspective, all built into the SD30. So if you're building a kiosk or a tablet solution, this is a great option for you. One of many that we have, but just showing you that close partnership that we have with MediaTek and our work with Intercom. Oftentimes we go where our customers need us to go. An example being this area of Android TV. So we recently have a set of customers that are exploring how they can apply Android TV into their solutions. Understanding that there is some um, ambiguity about Android TV. You have one class of devices that run straight Android that are essentially set top boxes or sticks that integrate to the TV via HDMI. So that's one general category that we look at. And then the second is actually Android TV itself. And so this is the operating system integrated into the television, and it is an offshoot of the core Android build. So we basically cover them both, and part of the value that we provide is because we're looking at a lot of different devices, we have perspective on the trade-offs for one particular model over the other to help customers make the best decision. So this is something that we typically do, follow our customers where they want to go, whether it's uh, Wear OS, whether it's watch-based Android devices. So Things like that, it's very important to us, and we're also extremely curious about this as well. That means that sometimes we're also ahead of our customers. So, for example, we have uh, Esper running on the Google Glass 2, um, and we also are attempting to do it on Oculus. I say attempting because we don't have Esper running yet. That's more of a fun project for us, but we definitely see the future where it's going, and we think that these types of devices and scenarios are going to be very important to our customers in the future. A key area are customers adapting consumer devices for these dedicated use cases. So it's important to have a lot of diversity around these GMF devices, which is Google's program for validating devices for consumer markets, as well as providing a set of software directly from Google that runs on them. Now the challenge is, is that just like Android, these devices are very diverse in their capabilities and also their compatibility with device management. And so that's one area that we focus on to have a wide variety of devices that map to use cases and the devices that our customers use to uh, build these types of solutions. So of course we have the major device makers as you would expect, you know, Samsung being one of them. And we're a Knox Mobile enrollment partner. Uh, we support the Knox APIs. But more specifically, we have a very close relationship, a partnership in fact, with Lenovo, where we're really working together to bring their fantastic line of tablets and really focus them on these commercial use cases in a way that gives customers a great price to performance as well as stability and flexibility that they're looking for adapting these consumer devices for commercial markets. We hope you enjoyed your tour of the Esper lab today. Well, how can you check out Esper? Why don't you go to esper.io and sign up for a free trial? We would love you to enroll your devices in the Esper, get them provisioned, we have almost 700 different models that have been provisioned on to Esper from over 100 different manufacturers. So we want more, we want you to join the party, join the fun. So again, go to esper.io, sign up for a free trial, and check out Esper. Thank you.